Hello, my name is Daniel Kostic and I will be commenting Pete Mendig's paper Conscious State Anti-Realism. Uh, I want to thank Richard Brown for organizing this conference. Uh, I think it's an excellent idea and obviously a tremendous success. Uh, in this video commentary I want to be summarizing Pete's paper. Uh, I will skip straight to discussing certain issues in it. Let me first say that this is a very good paper with a clear structure, neatly laid out, and in general a great pleasure to read. But I wouldn't be doing a great job as a commentator if I didn't find something to be critical about. In this paper, uh, Mandic uh, sets out to argue that the hot theory, the higher order thought theory, can defend against the first person operationalism, uh, FPO, only on a relational reading, according to which uh, consciousness consists uh, in a relation between a hot and an actually existing mental state. On Mandik's view of a relational reading, the hot theory must involve three items, two relata and a representing relation between them. Presumably, non-relational reading eliminates the representing relation. He goes on to argue that an ambiguity or a tension between these two readings in recent literature allows him to claim that hot theory is actually committed to non-relational reading, but in that case it collapses into a version of FPO. Uh, Mandik wants to argue that there is no such representational relation, and furthermore, if the hot theory is true, no such relation figures in it. If there is no such relation, then the hot theory can't distinguish between the hot Orwellian and hot Stalinesque explanations of the Phi phenomenon. And this further means that the content of one's consciousness is just a content of a hot. But I see no problem with this. This is what uh, Rosenthal seems to claim in his reply, in his reply to Ned Block in exaggerated reports. So, if I understand Mandy correctly, on non-relational reading, the representing is not an epistemically and metaphysically independent relation between what is represented and a representation. In other words, on a non-relational reading, uh, the representing relation is not something over and above the representation. It's actually the hot itself. Uh, somehow, it seems that without the representing relation, as epistemically uh, independent from the hot, we end up with what I'm inclined to call representational danglers. That is, the hot can't accurately pick out uh, an actual first order state that is causally responsible for its formation, and in that way collapses into the FPO. That is to say, without a, represent without a representing relation, the hot can't help us distinguish which one, which first order state is responsible for its forming in both Orwellian and Stalinesque uh, uh, scenarios. Uh, I hope this is correct understand. This is a correct understanding of Mandig's distinction. Uh, it wasn't quite clear to me what motivates Mandig's relational reading of the hot theory in the first place. Perhaps he would want to expand on that. Uh, for example, it's not at all obvious to me how a quote from Rosenthal on page 7 uh, invites the relational reading. It's also not clear from Mendick's quote ex exegesis that the literature can support a tension between these two readings. The other issue is whether non-relational reading actually makes the hot theory collapse into the FPO. I'll explain that in a moment. So, let's go step by step here. Uh, it's not clear to me what Mandix means what Mandic means by representing relation. I agree with him when he says that representation may involve relations, but it is not constituted uh, by a relation to which uh, to that which is represented. Uh, that's on page eleven. And he continues by claiming that it follows from there being no representation relation that there is no such relational property as the property of being represented. Uh, this seems uh, quite odd to me. If correct, this would allow for uh, representational danglers. Uh, 
are hot that have no content. But if they have no content, they can't be hot in the first place. That is to say, uh, if nothing is represented, then we have no representation. I'm not sure that hot theory is uh, actually committed uh, to relational reading, uh, because there seem to be some because although there seem to be some r relations between the first order state and a hot, uh, for example, a bottom up uh, causal relation from a first order state to a hot, or a top down uh, intentional relation from a hot to a first order state, that doesn't mean that there is a representing relation over and above these categories. It would uh, sound quite odd to say that there is a special additional causal relation between a cause and, f and, and an effect. Uh, so I think the same applies to this case. On the other hand, uh, I think uh, there are some resources in the latest accounts of the hot theory, uh, such as a combination of the quality space theory and higher order awareness, that can help us deal with cases uh, of unconscious perception. Uh, I don't see that the issue of whether it collapses into the FBO strongly depends on the distinction between relational and non-relational readings. Furthermore, uh, the quote from uh, Rosenthal uh, from 1995 only mentions the content of representations, although he uses terms such as relational, non-intrinsic, uh, external to a state, I can't see in this quote that, the, uh, that he actually claims that the representing relation is something over and above the representation or its content. So I don't really see how this invites a uh, relational reading. Uh, perhaps uh, Pete would want to elaborate on this as well. Uh, I agree with him uh, in, in a certain sense, uh, in as much as I think that there is no reason to think that hot, to think that hot theory is in any case that hot theory in any case requires a uh, relational reading, but that's a different matter, which I will explain later on. Uh, furthermore, uh, the fact that there is a bottom-up causal relation, the first order state causes a hot, and there is an intentional relation with branches top-down, either to the actual first order state or to an intentional content of a hot, uh, that doesn't mean that there is a special independent representing relation. But if, if, if Mendick is right about this, then what we are left with on a non-relational reading? I think it leaves us with representational danglers, uh, which is something that would, wouldn't make much sense. For it would allow for hots that have no content, and if they have no content, they are not hots. Uh, it would be wrong to conclude from this that uh, hots without content undermine the hot theory. Uh, it rather means that hots without content are not actually hots. So the very idea of representational danglers doesn't seem to make much sense. In this case, uh, he would have to argue that either there is no bottom-up causal relation between a first-order state and a hot, or that there is no top-down intentional relation between a hot and a first order state. Uh, but the case of empty thoughts requires that we have an intentional relation without a bottom up causal relation. Uh, or so I think uh, this is what uh, uh, Rosenthal means in his reply to Bloch and in other writings. But intentional relation can be between a hot and its intentional content regardless of the first order state. So the only difference is that in the normal case, uh, without anti-thoughts, uh, the intentional content, uh, content uh, matches the first order state. So on both relational and non-relational readings of the hot, readings, uh, the hot is representing something. It's not strictly speaking false. Uh, the only difference is that in the case of unconscious perception, such as masked priming, blindsight, or the phi phenomenon, the first order state does not correspond to whatever is causally responsible for it, but it only seems to correspond to whatever mechanism is responsible for forming the false perception. Uh, like uh, in the phi phenomenon, uh, 
where we perceive a moving circle instead of many stationary circles. Or like in the case of empty thoughts, where the hot is representing all its in intentional content. Uh, I'm not quite convinced from this quote that uh, there is a tension between a relational and non-relational reading. Uh, maybe there is, uh, but from uh, the Mandik's account, it's not quite clear. Perhaps he would like to address this issue in his response. Rosenthal argues in multiple drafts uh, from 1995 that being conscious is not an intrinsic property of mental states, because the same mental state can become unconscious from conscious and vice versa. He argues that consciousness is rather a property of being represented by a hot. It's not quite clear to me then uh, what Mandix takes to be the difference between a relational and non-relational reading of hot theory in this context. Uh, this formulation does, doesn't seem to invite uh, a relational reading. A state is conscious just in case we are able to report it non-inferentially. So for Rosenthal, there is a fact of the matter to tell whether a state is conscious or not. Uh, in fact, I happen to agree with this statement uh, from uh, Mendick's paper. Uh, to give a preview of the worry that they ultimately want to press against the hot theory, there are good reasons to think uh, that there is no such thing as representation relation, and so, if the hot theory is true, no such relation figures in it. That's on page 10. Uh, and I think I've been, I've, I've been arguing for this, uh, something like this so far. So an another issue to distinguish here is about uh, misrepresentations and erroneous introspection, but that's a topic for another discussion. Furthermore, it's not quite clear how a non-relational reading of hot theory commits it to a version of FPO from this paper. Uh, that part of the paper ends uh, a bit abruptly, and perhaps ne uh, more needs to be said about this crucial step in his account. Perhaps Mandik uh, would want to elaborate on this as well. Uh, I think there are some resources in the body of Rosenthal's work that can perhaps help him withstand this challenge. Uh, Rosenthal claims in exaggerated reports and in How to Think About Mental Qualities that actually there are cases in which a hot can, repre uh, can represent states that occur unconsciously. For example, in subliminal perception or masked priming. In these cases, the hot is about whatever we believe it's about. That is, it's about whatever it seems to us is a qualitative state, regardless of the actual unconscious states uh, that are in fact causing the hot. In this case, Rosenthal proposes using the quality space theory uh, to capture the actual first order state, which is unconscious. Uh, Rosenthal claims in multiple drafts and the facts of the matter from 1995 that it's implicit, uh, and I think it's implicitly or explicitly stated in many of his writings on hot, heat, on hot theories, that the first order state doesn't have to be conscious for a hot to represent it. Uh, he seems to be claiming that the representing relation uh, is always between the hot and its intentional content. That's what makes a state conscious. Uh, in some cases, the intentional content uh, matches the first order state, but in some, but in some other cases, it doesn't. So, the, uh, but the other issue is how to determine which actual state is causally responsible for that hot or first order state. Uh, in any event, it seems to me that the quality space theory is designed to, to answer this worry. It should be noted that this case is a bit different than the empty uh, thought case, inasmuch as we can use the quality space uh, theory to map unconscious perception. So the question whether hot that represent uh, merely its intentional content is a representational dangler remains open in the case of empty thoughts, but in the case of the color five, but not in the case of color five. Uh, but if it's a representational dangler, then it can be a proper hot. So both objections don't seem to do much harm to the hot theory. Uh, Mandik seems to claim that the color five phenomenon is an example of an inexistent first order state. 
he claims that we can't accurately de accurately uh, determine which first order order state is the uh, he claims that we can't accurately determine which first order state the hot is about and since and since it actually doesn't exist we end up having a false hot uh, I don't think that the color phi uh, is a good example of an inexistent first order state. It's only an example of an unconscious perception that is causally responsible for the hot. Uh, just because there is no actual motion to be experienced, there is still a causal relation between whatever unconscious perception or mechanism is responsible for the first order state and, cons and consequently for, for the hot. On the other hand, there is certainly an intentional top-down relation from a hut to whatever intentional content of that hut is. Uh, what creates a confusion here is that these two relations, uh, in the case of color phi, don't match. But, as I said, Rosenthal has already proposed a solution for unconscious perception, such as mask, mask priming or blindsight, and I can't see why color phi can't fall in this uh, category as well. Namely, the quality, uh, namely, Rosenthal, as uh, mentioned earlier, uh, proposed a quality space, space theory that can be used to correctly match the intentional and causal relations, uh, uh, for example, in color phi. Uh, a more interesting question regarding empty hots is not whether they can represent non existent objects, but rather whether they can represent an, an unconscious mental state. Uh, as I said, recently Rosenthal has proposed to use a quality space theory in combination with higher order awareness to explain and integrate unconscious perception uh, that would normally be considered an empty thought. But if you are not aware of it, it can't have what it is like quality. Let me summarize the key points uh, in my, of my criticism. First, I'm not quite sure, I'm not quite sure that the hot theory actually allows uh, relational reading in, in, in Pete Mandic's sense. Uh, it seems that this reading would imply an additional representing relation that is over and above the causal or intentional relations, which, if denied, if denied, would in effect make a hot a representational dangler. But that wouldn't make much sense, because in that case we wouldn't have a proper hot but something else. Uh, I also don't think that the uh, color phi uh, is a good example of inexistent first order state. I think it's an excellent example of uh, of an unconscious perception. And finally, I don't think that even on a non-relational reading, the hot theory collapses into the FPO. Uh, there are some moves in Rosenthal's, Rosenthal's part that don't seem to allow this. For example, the quality space theory. Uh, let me say again that this is a very good paper with plenty of good, great ideas and it provides a resource for much uh, better understanding uh, of the hot theories and it provokes a further discussion on this topic. Uh, that would be all. Thanks.